This is the Kinesis Advantage, and I've been using this keyboard 40 hours a week for the last month with great success. With a keyboard like this, where do I start? Let's start it off easy with the technical specifications. The keyboard has Cherry MX round switches that are plate mounted in the finger wells and PCB mounted on the thumb clusters. The keyboard plugs in via USB and has two USB ports on the bottom middle of the keyboard, as well as a phone style jack for compatible foot switches. Your fingers may contact with a pad printed ABS keycaps that will start to shine within a few weeks. The function keys located on the top are super cheap, mushy feeling switches that are just absolutely dreadful. The keyboard is 16.5 inches wide, 8 inches from the front to back, and 2.875 inches tall. The keyboard weighs in at 2.2 pounds, which is surprisingly lighter than what I expected from a keyboard this size. Fun fact. The distance between the F and J keys is a nice 9 inches. The keyboard released in 1996 with a dazzling white case, white keycaps, and blue legends. The homing keys were a lighter shade of blue. It wasn't until the keyboard was seen painted black in the movie Men in Black that Kinesis users demanded the keyboard in black. Since then, the Kinesis Advantage keyboard has been black with the exception of the Pro version, sporting a metallic looking, but plastic, case. In 2002, the modern USB version was released and is the current running version you see today with probably only minor changes since then. But that's enough history for the Kinesis Advantage. What about the one setting in front of me? Let's dive into the different features and capabilities of this keyboard by starting with the switch mountings, switches, and layout. Then I'll go over my typing experience with the keyboard. Plate mounted switches are in the finger wells and the PCB mounted switches are at the thumb clusters. Ask any sideline keyboard enthusiast and they'll tell you that mounting switches on a plate will add rigidity to the feel of the keystroke while mounting it straight on the PCB may add some flex or softness to the feel. Every commercially available mechanical keyboard that you can buy off the market right now is plate mounted. So it's a bit odd that Kinesis chose not to plate mount the thumb clusters when it would, in fact, be the easiest to plate mount. Plate mounting the finger wells are more difficult to do since they're on a curved PCB. The switches and the thumb clusters, on the other hand, sit flat on the flat PCB. While this didn't really affect my typing and usage very much, I still feel like it was something they skimped out on. The keyboard has Cherry MX Browns, which actuate at 45 grams and have 4 millimeters of travel. They were chosen for these keyboards due to the reliability and quality of Cherry switches, as well as the ease of use and tactility of Browns. There are two markets this keyboard panders to, those who want a more ergonomic keyboard and those who need a more ergonomic keyboard. Typically, those in the need section of the market would prefer a lighter switch due to whatever ailments may impair their long-term typing. These browns are unique Cherry MX browns, though. These MX Cherry browns have diodes built inside the switches. In these close-ups, you can see the diodes from the spots LEDs would usually poke through. Personally, I think that's pretty badass. Unfortunately, these switches aren't readily available to DIY enthusiasts unless you plan ordering several thousand from Cherry. The layout is quite pleasant, although it does take some getting used to. There is vertical stagger, but no horizontal stagger like on traditional keyboards. For a lot of people, training your thumbs to do a bit more than press spacebar does take some getting used to as well. The reason your thumbs perform more activities is to, quote, Redistribute the workload from your relatively weaker and overused little fingers to the stronger thumbs, end quote. There's a lot on Kinesis' website about the different benefits of the ergonomic layout, so I'll try to go over the main points. The key wells are concave to reduce finger and hand extensions. The separate key wells are to help your shoulder from being hunched in for too long. The slightly raised thumb clusters make your thumbs about 20 degrees higher than your rest of your fingers to minimize stresses associated with pronation and static muscle tension. Check out the link in the description to see their full blurb on this. How does she type? Before I get into that, let me be clear with how I've modified this keyboard. When I say modified, I'm just referring to one of the key features of this keyboard, which is key remapping. This keyboard also features macros and in keyboard Dvorak support. I type in Dvorak, so I've set the Kinesis Advantage to Dvorak mode. Next, I had to do a bit of remapping. I use spacebar exclusively with my left thumb, so my first order of business was swapping the space and backspace. Remapping keys on this keyboard is tremendously easy and took me under a minute to remap each key. Next, I swapped Alt and Control on the left thumb cluster and the GUI and Control key on the right thumb cluster. I made caps lock control and switched dash and underscore with the quotation marks to have a proper dash and underscore placement for Dvorak. My changes in the thumb clusters are shown by the changes in the keycaps, but I left the keycaps for the finger wells the same. 
and that's the gist of the keyboard's text and specs. There's also an integrated numpad, but I don't use it at all, just like with macros. The keycaps are profiled nicely to fit the finger and thumb wells of the keyboard. I don't have terribly large hands, yet this keyboard still feels really comfortable for me to use. I definitely understand some of the advantages when it comes to ergonomics. I don't need an ergonomic keyboard, but I definitely enjoy it. I can't say how much this keyboard would benefit someone with various wrist, hand, or finger ailments. The keyboard also came with two soft landing pads I could stick on the keyboard for the ball my palms or wrists to rest on, but I don't mind resting my palms on the case. Maybe it's because of the finger wells, but all the keys feel much easier to reach than when I had my Ergodox. When I had an Ergodox, it just didn't work out for me in the end. It was a good keyboard, but I would definitely choose the Kinesis over the Ergodox in terms of layout. Your fingers rest on scooped DSA keycaps, which makes for a comforting experience that reminds me of high pro Topra keyboards. Due to the arrangement of the keys, there are some hiccups in the transition phase. Getting used to the arrow keys split up on different sides was definitely a unique experience. Having to reach so far for alt tab was definitely annoying. By default, that'd be your thumb and pinky. If you want to add shift to that, you're probably going to want to use your right shift to make it a bit easier. And that brings it to one of the downsides of this keyboard is you can't use it casually. What do I mean by casually? I mean, when you use this keyboard, you have to be fully engaged and committed to typing on it. You can't lazily hit one key at a time as if you know, you're trying to sit back and type the first four letters of the movie you want to watch on Netflix while leaned all the way over from your couch. At least you'd be able to do that on a normal keyboard. You can slouch all the way back, but with a Kinesis advantage, you need both hands on the keyboard ready to go. If you're looking for a comfortable ergonomic layout with Cherry MX Brown keys, then the Kinesis advantage might be for you. If you plan on sitting down and typing for long sessions, this might be one of the best options for comfortable sustained typing. I hope you've enjoyed this review.